Yo, man, what's on your mind? Rest of the crew has got to stay here. Can't afford to let the beat drop right as we're getting off the ground. Much love to my hardcore antenna brothers. Good luck, guys. Try to squeeze in a promo spot while you're on air. We've got to start putting the word out. Back across the water, Luck. At least we are getting our exercise in today. You can grab that amplifier, officer. And you start spawning up those cables. Maybe we can get it all in one go. Just plug that in there, would ya? It's done. I believe we are ready. Yeah, as ready as we're gonna be. Grab one of these can sets, both of ya. I've got it rigged so that we can all listen, but only your cop talk will broadcast. No idea what we're gonna hear when I turn this thing on, so be prepared for anything. Trick is to keep transmitting your request until the big bad acknowledges you. You got that? Honestly, that might be for the best. Like I said, the signs coming off this whole project are seriously uncharted. Don't know how much juice we've got, so we better get to it. You ready? Good. We're live in two, one. A soft rustling. The snow seems to have gotten between your ears somehow. Every light switch, every motor carriage, every doorbell, tea kettle, and radio in Martinez, all mingled with electrical interference caused by scattered thunderstorms over Ozone. Hey, no man, we're waiting on ya. That's up to you. I don't know your call sign. You're all alone out there, wandering a blasted heath, calling out to the night. But there is no reply, except for the buzzing of invisible machines. The lieutenant looks up at you with a nervous glance. Nervous for who, though, he cannot say. Give it another go! Perhaps you're simply imagining it, but it seems as though you're learning to pull apart the fibers of this auditory felt. You focus on one strand in particular, one that sounds very nearly human. Nein, Liebling, das lasse ich nicht zu. Wie kannst du unseren Lungen bloß auf einen dieser Dinger nach Bredefort schicken? Marianne, mir erzählt, dass Oscar nicht mehr lebt. Seid ihr auf einem Luftschiff aus Grad zurückgekommen? Kein nee, die Psychologen für vollkommen normal. Aber sie hat das Gefühl, seit seiner Rückkehr mit einem Fremden zusammenzuleben. Something about her son going to Freyleford on an aerostatic to see some psychologists. Or maybe the psychologists are saying it's normal to have feelings for strangers. Foreign languages were never your strong suit. Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser einziges Kind. Er 
kann doch auch nächstes Jahr zur Akademie gehen. Is that what you call those radio spookers? Didn't know they had a technical name. Either way, you gotta keep it up till we get through. Again. It's gone now. A slight frizzle at the point where your neck meets your spine. Something about the lieutenant's words directed at you. But not you. Mention what? I didn't say anything, detective. Someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. An uncomfortable silence falls over the connection. It's been a long winter. Long and cold. I promise you I didn't. Even though it certainly sounds like me. So your partner's haunting himself. Trying to warn him off his current path, most like. It's eerie for certain, but also harmless. I just wish I could remember what I was talking about. Natürlich halten Sie die Psychologen für vollkommen normal. No can do. This is it. The only way forward is the hardcore way. Straight through. Now give it another go. But someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. The signals are getting increasingly mixed. Plucking Archer's signal from this will be like isolating a single strand from a tangle of hair. This isn't looking good. The radio spookers are winning. Don't know. If we can't get around the interference, we're in deep trouble. Hold on. I think Ed gave me some sort of checklist. Hmm. Says here, main step, volume to the max. That's not too helpful. Okay. It also says, inspect connections for hardcore clarity. So let's try that. Don't know. If we can't get around the interference, we're in deep trouble. Hmm. Said my guess, you climb up the centaur, man. See if there's anything obviously interfering with them. Maybe you've got some technical law science. This isn't exactly your area of expertise, though. Someone has been maintaining it. No problem at all. You've already teleported up way greater heights. Come on, son. This isn't anything but a common high bar. Just get a solid overhand grip and hoist yourself up. Images of your body smashed against the pavement flood your mind. This is dangerous. It's gotta be you. I'm manning the decks down here. You actually haven't. But you have proven that you are a relatively capable climber. Maybe you break an arm. Maybe you break your neck. Could go either way. Honestly. But that's what the Invalids Fund is for. So don't worry about it for now. Your gloves give you a solid grip on the metal bar. This feels pleasingly familiar. Keep it together, champ. You've got this.
before you know it, you're safely perched atop the monument. Yes, you're a natural gymnast, detective. Now, would you like to do what you got up there to do? The connection itself is nothing more than a little braid of exposed wire wrapped about the hoof of the horse. A copper fetter, it cannot slip. The whole monument is covered in a thin but durable layer of oil and grime. It's obvious no one has cleaned it in years. Well, what's it look like? That's not good. We should have cleaned the centaur man first. Pretty rude that we didn't. Hang on, I'm looking at Ed's checklist. He says, if all fails, bend antenna. Narrow is the hardcore way. That make any sense to you? It says here, muscle style. Good question. Maybe he's saying we're casting too wide a net. Got to narrow our receiving band so we pick up the big bad without the spookers. Since you're already up there, I say you should do it. The speed freak is right. The responsibility is yours and yours alone. There's no turning back now. You are face to face with Philip the third, the Bronze King, looks toward the west. Something about his features seems bizarrely distorted. Not intentionally. It's a matter of perspective. The King was never meant to be seen from such an angle as you've attained. His imperious gaze leads you naturally to his outstretched hand, which, for some reason, strikes you as sadly empty. You can't help but feel that saber you picked up might just give this old king a little more panache and better reception. Come on, kings and sabers are so played out. There's a better way. Why not arm the good king's valiant steed instead? There seems to be just enough room between its teeth there. To your surprise, the saber slides snugly between the horse's bare teeth. There is no way that is going to make any difference. Nah, every bit helps. We need this antenna to be as hardcore as humanly possible. The sky is grey and overcast. Snow spirals all around you. Through the scrim, you can just make out the shadow of Coalition Warship Archer a few kilometers to the east. A few of the idle lorry drivers and strike breakers gesture at you with their cigarettes, more out of curiosity than anything else. From the window of one of the adjacent apartment buildings, an older woman leans out, her heavy breasts sagging. She yells a single word you can't make out and then shuts the window with a violent thunk. This faithful steed cuts a dashing figure with the replica saber between its teeth. Your grip is firm, yet controlled. The swelling in your headset guides your hands as much as your hands guide the bronze horse head. It's almost like you're hearing through the horse itself. The signal is clear. The storm has passed. This is another voice, a live voice, on the other end of this invisible bridge you've established. Right now. 
Officer Sunset. This is Collision Worship Archer. We are acknowledging and accepting you. There it is! The big bad! Now be quick! I'll keep us aligned as long as I can! There is so much you wish you could ask. Your efforts have bought you some time, but you can't forget what you're really here for. Please be advised that you are speaking on a public frequency. What is your request? You are currently speaking with Coalition Worship Archer, flagship of Insurcom Forces in Revachon. Of course not. It's simply a rhetorical convention. A common synecdoche. We are the second signaler. Our name is not important. All you need to know is that we hold the position of second signaler aboard the Alps. You really don't have the faintest guess what her name could be. You were never very good at this sort of thing. There's something in the way she refers to herself, always with the first person plural. A deliberate blurring of the boundary between herself and the institution she represents. It's a great honor and responsibility. In addition to monitoring public frequencies, we are tasked with maintaining some of the most sensitive communication equipment about the Arctic. Quite good. We enjoy all the standard benefits for moral interforces on active duty assignments. Excellent healthcare, foreign service pay, a fully funded pension system, six weeks paid leave, bilingual childcare, Vocational certification credit. Really, it's quite a good career. Oh, it's fine. Hold on. You can tell she has more to say. Of course, serving on a coalition warship does require some personal sacrifices. But we have to be willing to make them if we believe in the mission. Nothing remarkable. Really, we have been very fortunate. But... We do sometimes wonder what we might be missing out on, like in Messina. But now, we have gotten quite far afield. What was the request? Hmm, that's difficult to say. We have a very particular view from our observation platform up here. Perhaps the best way to describe it, it is to say we have a very wide perspective, but not an especially detailed one. Oh, it looks quite lovely from here. From our portal, we see rolling hillsides covered with snow, a public park filled with grand oak trees, men and women going about on horses. Oh, there are children building a snowman by a small pond. The homes and gardens are quite beautiful, very near, like those in certain areas of Messina. We cannot say for certain. East it must be. We have only recently been deeded to the Archer, so we are still learning the names of all the many districts. She needs to see you down here. That's the only way she'll really get what you're about. Martinez, Martinez. That is to the west, yes? Stand by a moment. We are adjusting our viewfinder. Yes, we are looking at the river now. There are small islands in the middle of it. It's very nice, actually. Interesting. The west of the city looks very different from the east. There's a large motorway dividing it nearly in half. This must be the 881, no? Very well. Now, we're looking at an area that seems to be in urgent need of revitalization. Now we see the lake, and around that, a rather vibrant-looking city quarter. There are some large buildings from the turn of the century, we would guess. Yes, this must be the heart of the district. Mmm... Ah. So, that is Martinez. A distended pause. A slight chill of embarrassment. She isn't sure what to say. It is quite striking, compared to where we're from. There are a great many destroyed buildings, still. And we don't see any horses. It's really nothing like the eastern side of the city. But what's most striking are the people. They just... We don't even know how to say it. Perhaps. We do not generally reach for such evocative imagery, but... 
there is something rather desperate about them. And then, there's all the tear line about. It's very unpleasant to look at. We're going to widen our viewfinder a bit. Yes, recycling is very important. The Coalition always supports initiatives that promote civic responsibility and mindfulness. A roundabout, a roundabout. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, we see the monument. But there seems to be a man on top of it. To be completely honest, officer, we are not in a position to say. We can't really make out faces from this distance. From here, all we can really see are his pale cheeks. He looks like he hasn't slept in days. In any event, thank you for this tour of Revachol West. It has certainly been educational. Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser einziges Kind. The signal's weakening. I guess you've got about two questions left. Come again. We're picking up more interference. We can assure you, it is coming as soon as possible. That's rather optimistic. Though, of course, it depends on the contingencies. You must understand, the moral intern is responsible for ensuring the continuance and flourishing of mankind for the next 3,000 years. The planning division must account for a great many possible outcomes and chance events. Fortunately, we have contingency spreads to help guide our decision-making. Of course, there is no one spread that can reasonably account for all these possible events. But at least, we are able to prepare for the most likely eventualities. It's not really our area of expertise, but we can try to explain. Picture a smooth hill made from fresh dirt. Now, if you stand atop this hill and put a glass of water over it, what will happen? We know only that it will run down, but not what course it will take. If we place a rock in the water's path, will it divert to the left or to the right? We cannot say, but we may predict which way it might run in either event. That is the essence of the idea. You might also imagine these spreads as a kind of tree, with every juncture representing a different event, and every branch representing a different timeline. Not exactly. No one can know the future. But with contingent spread, it is possible to predict what the future realities might reasonably look like. Meaning, there are more and less reasonable futures. You should follow up on that. But we shouldn't overstate their importance. They are simply one of many tools used by the moral intern to set policy. Well, yes. Just as some events are less probable than others. While we expect the vast majority of realities will fall within a normal confidence interval, there must necessarily be some that fall outside that range as well. Who are we to say? We are only a second signaler, not a metaphysician. This is the only reality we have ever known. So, how can we judge how reasonable it might be compared to any other? The key, we believe, is to be open to meaning, even amidst great uncertainty. But now, we are only speaking for ourselves. That's impossible to say. It may be that Ravishal has a great role to play, or no role at all. That is the nature of contingency. But didn't the Wild Pines representative say that Ravishal would resolve history? You must understand, when we speak of contingency spreads, we are talking about the most fantastically complex data visualization human beings are capable of producing, with thousands of events, from elections and wars to natural disaster or scientific miracles, and millions of possible outcomes. It may be the case that, under certain scenarios, Revachal is vitally important, as it was during the collision landings in OA. It may also be the case, in many other equally plausible scenarios, that the Revachal is simply another once great city, like countless others throughout history. Perhaps, perhaps not. The world is full of great cities that have resolved the questions of their time. Lachert, Bradford, our own home of Advesterashit, 
It's even possible the cities that will resolve the questions of the future have not been founded yet. For this reason, responsibility for developing contingency spreads is only assigned to highly trained analysts working with advanced radio computers and a steady supply of drones. Of course, while the content of individual contingency spreads is deeply classified, many degrees beyond our access, everything we have heard from the Provisional Commission indicates that the transition is proceeding according to the appropriate timetable. Of course, the coalition supports the Revachalian people's desire for full democracy. We encourage you to contact the offices of the Provisional Commission if you're serious about getting involved. Oh, there are many things you can do. If you're interested in learning how to canvass for signatures, manage the polling place, or register voters, the Commission would be more than happy to direct you to a workshop. In fact, you may have picked the perfect time to get involved. Revasho is nearly ready to begin the first days of democratization. Soon, the people of Revasho will vote for slates of candidates who will make up the Transitional Advisory Council that will oversee the second phase of democratization. The Council is modeled after similar bodies developed in a number of transitional democracies. Its role is to devise and shape the future institutions of Revachalian democracy, according to local conditions. Local conditions, in this case, referring to incompetence, graft, and violence. Once elected, Council members will even have the opportunity to join one of several officially sanctioned political wings, depending on their ideological beliefs and policy preferences. A very important question. The wings are carefully selected to represent a wide spectrum of political thought. Typically, there's a liberal technocratic wing, a social democratic wing, and even a conservative populist wing. You wouldn't believe some of the ideas they express, but a vibrant and free political culture requires that all perspectives be given voice, even those many may find objectionable. In most cases, the Provisional Council selects them from a cross-section of the local population to ensure the slates actually reflect the people they represent. Of course, such a situation is not ideal. We would all prefer for the Vachalians to nominate the representatives directly. But that is why it's a Provisional Council. Our best theoreticians believe that three to five phases are appropriate for states that lack strong democratic tradition, which would certainly apply to Revachal. But we must stress that real democracy is an ongoing process and not simply an outcome. It must be cultivated and preserved if it is to endure. This is it. Final question time. I can already feel our alignment getting shaky. Is everything all right? We lost the connection for a moment. Acknowledge. To reach the committee, all you need to do is fill out the appropriate request form and submit it to the liaison for public affairs. If the liaison accepts your request, you will be invited to address the committee at their next quarterly public hearing. We believe the next hearing is scheduled for July. She's got to be joking your chain, right? You can't wait that long. Not a problem. If this is a time-sensitive matter, you may file an emergency address request with the liaison for public affairs. They typically respond within a few weeks. We're afraid that it's quite impossible, Officer Sunset. We cannot transfer you to the committee because we are not entrusted with that responsibility. We are simply the second signal. That is the nature of the command pyramid, yes. Most modern organizations work in a similar way, even the FCM. You're getting out tangled by the big bad. Time to try something else. This isn't about you. Not really. It may have been at a certain point, but you've let go of that perspective. This is about your responsibility to all of Revachon. Now, Take a deep breath. Look upward. You don't have to bear the burden alone. What? How do you know this? Officer, this is a very serious claim. Please describe the situation as succinctly as possible. We will forward your summary to the committee. 
There's papers rustling in the background. She's clearing her desk, preparing to take notes. There, you've wedged your foot in the door. Now, if you could show the Coalition how much they're needed, they'll have no choice but to intervene. You have the facts. Just lay them out beneath the cold light of reason. Please continue. We're listening. We have it. Is there anything else the committee should know? Thank you. Before you answer that, I urge you to weigh your words extremely carefully. The lieutenant is afraid you're going to say something too outre. We're afraid we must ask you to repeat that, Officer Sunset. Oh, uh, afraid? What is she afraid of? Her tone has shifted. She's no longer herself. She's reading from a script. Your words have activated some sort of procedure. Never mind that. All you need to do is repeat what you just said. Do as she says. There's no other option. Acknowledge. Listen very carefully, officer. We're going to ask you a series of questions. It is imperative that you answer as directly and truthfully as you can. Do you understand? Good. First question. Are you currently in the vicinity of Seregli, the North Arcade Islands, or near Pale Offshore Platform in Indico? Very good. Next question. Would you describe the phenomenon as internal to the Isola or external to the Isola? What she means is, actually, you have no idea what those words could mean in this context. Answer the question, please. Next question. At the time, did you experience sense objects? Yes. Examples may include sound, memory, light. Let's go on. Final question. Were you alone? Yes. Unquestionably. Irrevocably alone. Of course not. The radio programmer was there. There's no need to overthink this. We repeat. Were you alone? You hear the sound of a page ripping. Thank you, officer. Please stand by while we transmit our summary. The signals are starting to misalign. Not sure how much longer I can hold them together. Officer Sunset, this is Collision Worship Archer. Please acknowledge. Thank you for standing by. We are authorized to report the Committee of Responsibility for Revachal has acknowledged and accepted your request. They would like you to address your matter to the Committee directly, as their earliest convenience. Local matters can wait. Collision Shuttle Laurel is setting a course for your position. They will arrive momentarily. Stand by. Fat raindrops explode all around you. You wait, exposed to the meteorological bombardment. At least you're wearing a hat. No way! Big Ben coming here! The lieutenant adjusts his microphone and slowly looks up toward you. rhyme jingling in your mind's attic of the future of the past of all that is not made to last the lieutenant takes a moment to compose his thoughts i don't know your history detective but i can say with great certainty that whatever you're running from won't disappear simply because you've abandoned your former life because the thing you're running from is inside you the lieutenant's final words are nearly swallowed by the roar of the aerostatic's main rotors. Officer Sunset, this is Collision Worship Archer. We have been instructed to inform you that the Laurel arrived at your position. Please acknowledge. 
No shit. How are they supposed to hear your acknowledgement over the thundering of their own rotors? Thank you. The Committee of Responsibility for Ravishal has authorized us to offer you an immediate extraction. Do you accept? We are far past that point, officer. There is only one question now. Are you ready or are you not? Repeat that, officer. What do you mean, you can't? Are you being impeded in some way? We have to say, this is extremely disappointing to hear, officer. What the consequences will be for your refusal to accept responsibility, we cannot say. For your sake, we pray they are not more than we all can bear. And now, we are updating our frequencies. We will not speak again. This connection will be cleared in four, three, two, one. And the line goes quiet. The lieutenant gives a long sigh as he removes his headphones. There's relief on his face as he turns toward you. I think it's best for you to climb off the statue now, detective. Your real work is done here. There's a damp cold running up the insides of your thighs. Your legs have grown stiff. You've been up here quite a while. You look around. The strike breakers are still shouting their slogans and waving their hand-painted signs. Beneath you, the lieutenant and the speed freak have begun disconnecting a few cables. There's really no point. You're beginning to feel like the little child who refuses to come down off the carousel. About time. You grab that amp. Forget the cables. Need to leave some evidence of our antenna to inspire future generations. <sighs> What's one more trip across the water lock? Well, cop man, we've repaid the favor. Guess this cements the cop our core alliance. Sure, you have to say that now, that's all right. I'll put this tech away later. Think there's an extra can set, in case you want to grab a souvenir or something. Don't think anyone will miss it. What is it? 